I can't believe I caught that on camera. friends to the hustling and bustling port of Tuna Fishery here in General Santo City in the South Cotabato region of the Philippines in Mindanao. We are deep in it right now, deep in the Philippines. I'm joined by my viewer L right here. He's been showing me around, she's a local here in Gensan and today we're doing one of the most exciting things I've ever done in the Philippines. We're going to be watching the live auctioning and fishing and selling and cleaning of tuna because this is the capital of tuna here in the Philippines. As you can see, everybody's starting to come in for right now to port. A bunch of tuna fishermen are bringing in the tuna. We'll be walking through here as the day progresses. But before we do anything else, let's roll the intro. And the first thing we need to do is go get some boots, just like these guys are wearing. We have regular shoes on right now. As well, another rule when you come here is you have to be wearing long sleeve shirts or long pants. You can't you can't come in here with shorts or sandals. You gotta have closed toed shoes. Everything's gotta be pretty organized. So we're gonna go get the boots first and then we can continue. Oh, here's the boots. All right, so first step, we gotta remove our shoes here. They fit. They fit. All right, so we have made it to the official unloading area right now. This is the uh, this is a section of the market here that has the bigger fish. And as you can see, they're already setting stuff up. They're weighing them. And these are some massive tunas. Look at that. It's really cool too. Hopefully later on we'll be able to see how they actually weigh them and how they test the fat content because that's how they're sold for more money, especially abroad. But you can see how big that tuna is, it's massive. Super cool, there's a way to actually test how much fat content is inside of the tuna. They use this little straw and they sort of stick it into the spine of the tuna and they pull it out and then they can see how much fat is in there. And then that's how you know what the tuna is sold for more. Usually with really high fat content, that's when they export it out to Japan because those are worth a lot of money. The lower fat content are marked with these little bands and sold for less, but you can see right there, pulling it out, super cool. I caught that on camera. Wow! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, this is Marlin. Oh, that's why it's so big. Blue Marlin is very big. Wow. Oh, so this is Marlin also? Cut the head in. Wow. All Marlins must be cut the head. Cut the head then. This is what I love about the Philippines. I'm just boarding the fishing boat right now. <laughs> Hello, Kuya. My own Muntak. What, what kind of tuna you catch? Uh, fish. Which, blue, blue fin? Yellow fin? Yellow fin. Yellow fin tuna. Which one? Laborer. Laborer, okay. Okay, and fisherman. Mix, mix. Mix. They mix for the 
It's just a straight conveyor belt of massive tuna. And they're all working as a team here to bring them through that little ice box, all the way up and out to where they're going to be auctioning them off later. Super interesting to be on the ship where this is happening. Super cool. Section. They have actually different types of fish. These are the smaller, I guess, bycatch. Get some red snappers here, and it looks like some uh, amberjacks, maybe? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not really good with my type of fish, but there's a bunch of little fish being sold here. But right here in front of us, we got, in my opinion, the best fish of all time, the mahi-mahi. The dolphin fish, which is also freshly caught here in the Philippines. This is just the best tasting fish on planet Earth, in my opinion. Okay, so what, what are we standing in front of now? So here, this is where the fish are being prepared so that they'll be packed and they'll be transported to different destinations, to different places in the country and even to different parts of the world. I think I might have forgotten earlier to mention what time you should get here. Uh, we left the house in Gensan, in General Santo City at around 4 a.m. Yeah, you want to get here around 5 a.m. to see, you know, them uh, bringing the tunas off the boat. As you can see here, there's even more fish right down here but yeah you want to try to get here as early as possible especially for the tuna this place goes all day all day it doesn't stop but if you want to see the big old tunas in the morning that's the best time to see them is around 5 a.m get here and the whole shebang with the tuna she'll last about till seven i think all right got the regular shoes back on and we're good to go and where are we now this is bowing bowing yeah it's a town outside of General Santos, Barangay? Yes, a barangay in Jensan. It's the farthest barangay here mm. in General Santos City. And we're at one of her friend's house and they brought out a bunch of tuna lumpia. Lumpia is basically like an egg roll. It's very famous in the Philippines and this one is filled with tuna from Jensan. So good. So, so good. So Kuya back there just brought out this bowl of sweet potatoes. And then I realized, I was like, oh wait, there's sweet potato in here. This is a tuna sweet potato egg roll, and it is freaking amazing. I've had a lot of lumpia in the Philippines, but this is by far, it's fresh, it's slightly warm, it's like, mm. And it's crunchy. Crunchy, this is the best one I've ever had, I think. All right, I'm gonna be the multi-cab master now. Kuya is allowing me the opportunity to drive this four by four multi-cab. I've never done this before with this multi-cab before. <laughs> yeah. But this is nice. This is a nice multi-cab. I like it. All right, I'm gonna give this a shot. Let's see how it drives. Let it go nice and slow. Nice and slow. Just off-road into the farmland with Kuya in the back. Let's try this out. Stalled it again. There we go, nice and easy. Go. Just trying it. It's working. You see, this is what I'm used to. I've been driving L's car around the last two days, Toyota, and it's automatic. This is what I'm used to. You know, a little multi-cab. Say hi to the goats along the way. Hi, goats. How's it going? Anyhow, I'm gonna focus driving down this cliff, and uh, we'll see you on the way down. So we took a ride up in this rinky-dinky multi-cab 
up to I mean like, I had no idea that environments like this even existed in the Philippines this looks like Israel this is so crazy it's like an arid hillside countryside but El's friends are making a dragon fruit plantation out here so you can see there's some dragon fruit crops being built out here but just look at look at this view oh my goodness breathtaking. it is absolutely breathtaking yeah. They're building this little house out here with this view this is just inc this is something else I have legitimately never seen anything like this in the Philippines yet. This is the first time I've ever seen an environment like this. Can I go up? Yeah. Here comes the roll up, ladies and gentlemen. You ready for the view? Here we go. Wow. Oh my God. Look at this. Whew. That is beautiful. Wow. And that's it. That's that's ocean out there. That's the end of the Philippines. Amazing. So we spent quite a bit of time up there on this little tower, just observing, but I reconfirmed the fact that I believe I have never seen anything like this in the Philippines yet. This is like pristine farmland. And I don't know if this is caused by people to make the environment look like this, because I'm so used to just tropical jungles in the Philippines. Um, but it's just super cool to see such a diverse landscape, like something different than just super vibrant green. But right now, I'm gonna go do a little animal interaction. There's goats all over this farm. I love goats, one of my favorite animals. So I wanna go touch them and play with them. So let's go do that. Look at these little pipsqueaks. Hello goats, hello goats. They're so cute. Look at these little guys. Oh, look at the babies. It's being so friendly just to let a complete stranger into their goat farm. Oh. Don't eat my bag. Don't eat my bag, boy. Hey, hey bud. Look at all these adorable Filipino goats. Come on guys, let's go, let's follow the farmer. This is a mama goat and a baby goat. Do you go, do you go, it's all good. We're chilling. We chilling, we chilling, we chilling. There you go, that feels good, huh? You like that? Now we got a goat scratch going on. Yeah. <laughs> now we got some goat scratching going on. This goat likes it. You were scared at first, now you like it. I love goats, they're so chill. They're such friendly little animals too. Just me and my goat friend. Just chilling. Bye-bye, goat. 
Thank you for letting me scratch you. Thank you so much. Look, look, he loves the scratches. <laughs> it's so chill. It's straight chilling. Me and my goat friend, we're chilling. Me and my goat. <laughs> he doesn't give a crap. He's totally chilling. I wanted to quickly show you guys where we've been staying here in Jensan. We've been staying at this place called Patria's Bed and Breakfast. It is super cool. Can be found on Airbnb using my Airbnb code down below in the description. If you sign up, you'll get $40 off your first day. And that can be well over a few free nights in a bunch of different places all across the Philippines. Patria's is awesome. The food is incredible. The design of the place is beautiful. The rooms are so elegant and even have this really cool sliding hiding bathroom. Highly recommend checking this place out. It's been so much fun staying with them. Hello, where are we? It's called uh, Spring Valley Compound Tumblr. Okay. Yeah. So we're in the town of Tumblr, which is right next to... I like those people. Yeah, San, San Jen. And her husband, that's her husband, actually works here. Okay, so El's husband here just explained to me a few things that I definitely got wrong about this whole fishing industry. And I want to explain to you real quick because we just had a long conversation about it. So this right here is actually the, the holding boat. So what happens is you catch the tuna 200 miles offshore of Mati on the eastern coast of Mindanao. That's where they catch all the tuna. And the reason that they bring them here is because there's regulations on how you can sell the tuna. So they actually make more money selling them in Jensan rather than selling them in Mati. So what happens is the fishing boats, they actually stay out in Mati for months on end, sometimes three, four, five, six months with all the fishing guys on there. And you have to use this boat that's being loaded up with these ice cubes so you can see these ice cubes sort of come out of this facility over here. They load them out into these holding boats and then this can carry up to 50 tons of tuna. And it will sail all the way back and forth between Mati and here. Instead of the fishing boat coming back and forth, they actually use this boat to carry all the tuna back here. And then that takes it to the complex where they sell the tuna and they restart the cycle. So it's super interesting, super involved, a lot less simple than I thought it was because I was under the impression they just sail to Mati, catch the fish and then come back every day. That's not the case. There's actually a boat that stays there permanently, and this is the one that actually comes back and forth. These were the boats we were seeing today in the morning at the complex. So super interesting. Salamat for explaining. Thank you so much. <laughs> and here you can see the ice conveyor belt. Woo! <laughs> it's so cool. Whoa. <laughs> the reason this place is actually called Spring Valley is because it has a spring. This is how they actually make the ice cubes. It's super cold water, apparently. Wow, look at that. Oh my God. Wow! This is the recalling system of our plant. Wow. It's like a legitimate spring right here. But we will not be, we will not touching the fish. No touching fish. So cool. So this right here, this is the entire source of this fishing facility. Right here, this is how they make their ice. This is how they filter it. Wow, that's so cool. So we're currently in the ice plant. This is where they're actually creating the ice store all the fish on the boat. Giant vats of water that are being turned into ice. Ah. Here you go, you can see the source of the ice being pushed down. Kuya's gonna throw it down, here we go. Boom. There goes the ice. And that's the end of another video for you guys here in Mindanao in the Philippines. I want you guys to subscribe and don't forget to use my Airbnb link down below in the description to get $40 off your first Airbnb. Thank you so much to Patria's Bed and Breakfast for hosting us here in Jensan. Thank you so much to everybody who helped us make this video possible. There will be links in the description to everybody who helped out. Your Filipino word of the day today is going to be ista, which means fish, it's relevant, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you a long time. Goodbye, clats.